there's an old wise tale that says that you should not take all your strings off at one time, change them individually with new strings. But if the guitar has not been, strings had not been changed in quite some time, the only way that you can clean the frets and put oil on the fretboard is to change all the strings at one time. So that's what we're gonna do on this one. These strings that we're putting on here, these are Diodario Chromes, which is a flat wound string. These strings hold up for a long time. So we're just gonna change them all. rust on these so it's definitely time okay we're going to take the tarnish the little green off of the frets make the frets shiny some people go as far as to buy the little fret covers to go over the top of them. They come in different sizes. Uh, these are, for this guitar, these are large frets. But if you take triple alt steel wool and put over the end of your finger, if you ride on top of the fret right there, you can feel the fret on either side underneath your finger. See the difference in what that did compared to that? Just shines them up. Gets any residue off of them. You're basically just doing the fret. You can tell underneath your finger if you're on the wood. No need for that. I do this any time that I take all the strings off. As I say, you don't have to take them off every time. So what we're gonna do to the fingerboard lasts quite a while. Any kind of Good conditioner for the fingerboard is good. I happen to like this Gurlitz guitar, honey. Uh, unlike a pure lemon oil that would dry out your fingerboard, or an orange oil or any type of citrus oil, this has got a combination of oils in it and leaves the fingerboard a nice, pretty color cleans and conditions. Leave that on for just a minute. While that's sinking in, we'll take a polish cloth and wipe off the peg head of the guitar get any dust that's built up off of it and since we have this off this is another polish i like this is smith pro polish i know smith is known for building their bass guitars ken smith 
I do know for a while Taylor was actually using the same polish right here. But uh, to me, this is like a perfume. I've had some guitar polishes before that downright had a smell to them. They stunk. But this here has a very, this is like perfume for your guitar. I like this, and whenever you open your case up and take it out, <laughs> smells wonderful. Okay, now that we've let the conditioner into the fingerboard, we just wipe the residue off of it. See what pretty color that made that. You can tell when the fingerboard is dried out. It has a flat, dull look to it that brings it all back. reason we're putting a flat wound string on this guitar, a casino has such a wonderful legacy to it. This is a hollow body guitar with P90 pickups on it, but this guitar here, if I ever had to pick a guitar to go from if I was an acoustic player primarily and I wanted an electric guitar that I could use as acoustic slash electric, this guitar covers both of them. It's got wonderful acoustic properties, but uh, it just absolutely, it fills two purposes depending on what amp setup you've got or whatever. Uh, this guitar just, depending on where you set your tone, which pickup you use, you could definitely get away with acoustic overtones in this guitar. And uh, it will wail if you want it to, just ask the Beatles. They certainly believed in it. There's definitely a right way and a wrong way to put the string on. First, what we're going to do is we're going to line up all the holes. Lord, do me a favor and hold that little pressure on that. This is not one of the tail pieces that you just have a hole to put it through. This one can pop out the bottom. There you go. Okay, what we're going to do is, this is three to a side. So we're going to start off with this. Rule of thumb, people have different lengths of fingers. So I don't think the length of the finger matters that much, but normally you come to the bottom of your finger where it joins your hand. That is enough right there that on the top three, we're gonna go under the post, under this string, and back over the top of it. Just like that. See how that covers that string. And then we'll take our string. 
spring winder. We'll keep some pressure at the bottom. Now, do you see how that caught the string right there by going under the string and back over the top? That will keep, once the strings are stretched out, once you get it in tune, pretty much stays in tune. Do you have any problem with this guitar going out of tune? Oh no. That is plenty of wrap. Some people, they put way too much wrap on there. Anytime you crisscross a string, put wrap on top of a wrap, what ends up happening is you deaden the tone of the string. So that is all of the wrap that we need for that. And then we'll go to the next one. keeping my finger on the top of it to keep the winding at the bottom of the post. Just like that. The reason why I line all the holes up on here is so I've just got a straight run. I know where I'm starting at every time. Okay. Rule of thumb with a three and three peg head is always go to the inside of the peg head. So I'm gonna get my correct string length right there. And then where before I pushed the string this way and went under it, this way I'm taking the string, going to the inside of the peg head, pulling it over, kind of under the bridge and over the bridge, like that. Now, I had a guy tell me that anytime I take the strings off of this, I need to put a cloth down under this tailpiece to keep the body from getting scratched. And I'm like, that poly right there will probably survive a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> it's different than lacquer, that's for sure. Holly finishes cockroaches and Keith Richards probably. Don't talk about the elderly.
Also heard that on these selector switches, the, when you store it or put it in this case to keep it in the middle position, to keep the switch from wearing out faster than it should. I don't know if there's truth to that or not. Hmm. I don't know about that. Okay, once the guitar is tuned, then what I like to do is, you see all this excess up here? Until the strings are actually tightened to pitch and they stay in pitch, what I like to do, I had an old guy that went to the Martin factory and he saw Martin doing this and he asked why and the reason is there's an inner core on these four strings so what they were doing was they were going over the top of the post of the machine head and they're crimping it they're putting a bend in it they said what that actually did was that kept the inner core from sliding where the crimp is made sense to me and the fact is is i have actually before i learned this i actually cut my strings too short before and if you did not have them around the post properly they would slip and so even though these do not have a core in it, your first and second string, I just got in the habit of doing that. Simply now, when you take your cutters, all you have to do is rest on top of it and cut it. And it leaves it right there. string is right next to the post and you don't have a bunch of strings flopping all over the place to hit you in the eye with it. Tidy my fingerprints up. If you've never played a casino, you ought to give it a try. Number one, it's one of the lightest guitars. If you're looking for a guitar that, if most of what you've been playing is extremely heavy, you pick this up. This goes back to the point that you're looking for something that is a crossover between an acoustic and electric. You know, this is lighter than some acoustic guitars that you pick up. The reason that we're using the flat wound strings on here is they give wonderful tone to this guitar being a true hollow body. And the fact of the guitar that with the flat wound strings, it gives you somewhat of a jazzy sound to it. Think clean, think clear. You can muddy it up with a distortion pedal if you wanted to, but these guitars are wonderful. I like it. A little wax on her. This is also by Gurlitz. This is called Number One. This is a paste wax. Comes with a little Especially on the backs where your blue jeans or your pants or 
whatever shirt you're wearing is on the back of this. I put just a light coat on it. Then I come back with the garlic. You don't have to let it dry to a haze. This is a true carnauba wax. And then what I like to do, just using just the wax, is sort of stiff. I know you've put wax on your car before and you let it dry a little bit and it's stiff to come off. What I do is I use the Smith polish as, as a catalyst to work with the wax. Just put a couple of squirts on it. Just like your car, doing a circular motion. And it leaves a hard finish on it. Isn't that beautiful? A clean guitar is a happy guitar. You took the uh, pit guard off of it, and I like that. Uh, you know, if you're a, what they call a frammer, and you have a right-hand technique that's like you're painting a fence, I can understand leaving a pit guard on there, but if you're an accomplished player and... You've got good right hand technique. You don't need that pit guard on there. There has to be a reason why Paul Reed Smith doesn't put pit guards on their guitars because they're showing the guitar off. They're showing that finish off. I think this guitar just looks a lot better without that big pit guard. But then again, it depends on the type player you are and well, I just figured the less plastic, the better off I am. Yes. I love to play in the front position on these guitars right here. That, that front pickup is, uh, there's magic in it. If you haven't played a casino, by all means, try one out. There you go. All right. Well, you just let me know when you want to change out the wiring harness. Um, <laughs> that is, uh, you got to put your tongue in your left cheek and uh, it's not anything that you're going to be doing in 10 minutes, that's for sure. Let's hope your wiring harness lasts for a while. <laughs>